What's going on YouTube? It is Pete coming in hot with another video. Also known as that guy Pete. You just refuse to invite the gatherings. Mm. And today, we are here to talk about life's professors, experience, observation, so on and so forth. This topic was uh, recommended by Lucas. So hopefully you enjoy the topic that we explore here today. So what we're here to really deep dive into is the idea of learning things, life lessons, through either experience or learning those same life lessons through observation. And how some people prefer experience, some people prefer observation. And I really just want to explore the idea of um, how both have merit and ultimately how you learn. That's yours. Nobody can take that from you. Um, and uh, you can even use a combination of both to reach a sort of um, hybrid method if that works for you. Okay. So let's begin with experience. So when I talk about experience versus observation, I look at experience as the main teacher in life, right? Experience is essentially living through it. It's making the choices yourself and you as a person are being immersed in all the positives and negatives that come with this experience, right? When you're having good experiences, you're living in the moment, and you're getting all the benefits of being in that positive experience. When you're in a negative experience, you are getting all the negatives that come with that, all the cons, so to speak. And often with negative experiences in particular comes pain, while with uh, positive experiences tends to be pleasure and other derivative emotions that come with that, such as joy, uh, maybe peace, um, things like this, right? So, I mean, that's really the core of experience. It's not really complicated, but some experiences are unavoidable. Others are optional. In an ideal world, people avoid bad ones and seek out good ones. So what do I mean by some experiences are unavoidable? Well, some experiences, for example, losing a loved one, that's unavoidable. There's a very, very high probability that somebody you give a shit about is gonna die somewhere at some time and with that experience you're gonna have to process all the the negatives that come with that right it just is what it is however there are some experiences that you can avoid for example you don't have to experience marriage marriage is optional you don't have to experience it if you don't want to and a very radical thought is you can still have an opinion on marriage without having experienced it yourself. And we'll talk more on why that is in a bit. And the same goes for long-term relationships as well. Now, some people, they get more out of an experience than others. And some need to experience the same thing multiple times to learn anything useful from it. Others get it right away. So what does this mean? Let's say you have, um, again, intersex relations is often the best example because it's something that's relatable to everybody. Let's say as a guy, you are interested in a girl. There's no choosing signals. There's no nothing, but you're blue pilled and clueless. So like you don't follow all this. So maybe she's just being nice, right? But she doesn't really like you like that. And because you know, she's being nice and, you know, everything seems to be kind of going all right. But yet when you admit that you have feelings for her and she doesn't reciprocate, you feel like you're led on, right? That sounds like a familiar story for a lot of guys maybe watching. And I'm sure women have experienced that as well when chasing a Chad of some variety. So some people can go through that one time. Right? One time, maybe they wasted a month 
and they figure it out like that. Some people need to fuck up multiple times. Some people need to have the same thing happen to them with five to 10 different girls, let's say, before they finally click like, huh, maybe the way I'm handling this is off, right? It's just a matter of who you are as a person. So yeah, some people get it right away and others don't. Others need to experience it a lot. And then there's some people who don't need to experience it at all. More on that later, right? So it just depends. Some people get more out of an experience than others. Me personally, I mean, I mean, I technically had a girlfriend at 16. We only went out for like a month. That wasn't really anything crazy. I had a girlfriend at 17 going into 18. That was probably like, you know, three to four months. That wasn't um, that in-depth either. And then I had another girl at 19 for like a month and change. And after that, like I just... I, that fizzled out and then I haven't had anything since though I did again like I always talk about on this channel I pursued that girl at the pharmacy never shit where you eat it's a bad idea um, for like you know five years and that was the final nail in the coffin and that's when I started looking for answers so you know even myself and in between all that there were other girls that I got hung up on like in college and stuff but um, it just comes to show you like, you got to some guys need to go through a lot of pain before they realize like, nah, all right. The emotional nerve endings have essentially burnt out and now like I need answers because clearly what I'm doing isn't working. And then you start looking for answers. And then there's people like, you know, at least on the relationship side, like I had very short term relationships, relatively speaking. And, you know, I was able to figure out some things quickly, like, um, you know, being gaslighted and things like this, like this is not normal. This is not normal. And I think a big part of that was the type of household that I grew up under. Um, it kind of showed me what a healthy relationship looks like. While my childhood best friend's parents, their relationship showed me what an unhealthy relationship looked like. And I was able to be like, all right, this relationship seems to kind of lean more towards the, the, the bad side. And I was able to kind of put two and two together much more quickly than I otherwise would have. So... Yeah, like I, that's kind of what I mean when I'm saying, you know, some people can get a lot out of a little and then some people need a lot just to get a little. It's just two opposite sides. So what you get out of an experience is just as important as the experience itself, I guess is what I'm trying to drive at here. Now, that being said, risk takers in particular, they prefer to use their five senses and actually jump feet first into experiences. That's how they learn. They, they go in, feet first, balls deep, and they just live it. And whatever happens as a result of that experience, they extract their findings from their own personal experiences. They look at what worked. They look at what didn't work. They integrated what worked and carried that forward, and then the rest they leave behind. Right? Now, the double-edged sword, the other side of it, is that people who prefer experience, they will often chastise and employ argument from authority against those who prefer observation, which we'll talk about in a bit. No experience, no opinion allowed, essentially. And why wouldn't they? Because again, you have these types of people where their entire life is going feet first into experience. And what if they went feet first into experience and had a lot of pain? The idea that another person can learn the lessons without having had to go through the pain that they did, yeah, that makes you probably feel a certain kind of way, but that's the world we live in. There are some people that have to go feet first and feel the pain to learn why it's a bad decision. Um, you know, ladies, for example, how many bad boys? How many of you have gone through the bad boys and felt the pain before you realize like, yeah, this is not conducive to a long-term relationship? Exactly. But then there's people that can watch that and go, yeah, I can see you're not looking too happy from that, so I'm not going to do that. So a lot of people tend to have that opinion when they're in the experience camp. They tend to tell you, well, you know, you didn't experience it, so what the fuck do you know? Sometimes you don't have to. And, um, yeah, that's a very interesting observation that I have seen when talking to people that have been through the experiences. It's almost like they envy you, <laughs> It's almost like they envy you because you didn't have to go through what they went through to arrive at the same conclusion. But 
putting all that to the side, despite that, um, bad experiences make people stronger. And experiences that are good, uh, they enhance your quality of life. But, you know, people that believe in experience uh, as their main mode of operation in this world, they tend to learn best from their own mistakes. Right? So they're the kind of people like, you know, you can tell them why something's a bad idea over and over and over and over again until you're blue in the face. But until they go and fuck it up themselves, they're not going to listen to you. There's just people that are like that. And it is what it is. Now, that's pretty much experience in a nutshell. On the other side, we have observation. I like to call observation the substitute teacher. It's a teacher, but it's not the main teacher in life. So observation is essentially listening to other people and watching them make choices, right? So they're making their choices. And after they make their choices, you're watching them make their choices. You're assessing the results of their choices. You take what is useful and integrate the pros and cons into your knowledge base. When I was working in the pharmacy, you have the opportunity to talk to the elderly a great deal. And what's great about the elderly is that they've lived full lives. So, you know, they can tell you in their experience what's worked and what hasn't worked, right? And, you know, you also kind of in your own mind have to compare and contrast that with what you're seeing in the younger crowd to kind of build a bridge and get a fuller picture. You know, that's what you're always trying to do. But the point is, um, you know, a lot of elderly people are very wise and it's good to pick their brains and talk to them in my opinion. Okay? Now, that being said, it's also important that you look at the people around you in your life and you watch the decisions that they make because that will tell you what yields bad results and what yields good results. So, growing up, I always talk about my parents and I have seen up front kind of what a good relationship looks like. So I knew kind of what was acceptable and what wasn't acceptable. Contrasting that, though, I had my childhood best friend where I saw what was really a bad relationship, like bad, like as bad as it gets. And um, that showed me what you should not accept in a relationship. Having never experienced either scenario myself, you know, sans like, you know, those short term relationships when I was younger kind of being on the receiving end of gaslighting and stuff like that, dipping my toes into the water of bad experiences. It was pretty clear that I was able to see like the two tails of this. Another way that I learned um, was by watching my brother. So my older brother, um, he's married now, but you know, I watched him have a uh, a three year relationship with his high school sweetheart at the time. Then, you know, she broke his heart and then he joined the Navy and went to the other side of the world. So he got to experience the whole Southeast Asia thing as a JBW sailor. He got to experience all that. Right. And he, he shared his experiences with me on that. And, you know, given where he was at that time in life, that was an interesting experience for him. And um, then, you know, he came back home and, you know, he dated a girl here and there. And then for a time, he was kind of in the same boat as me, where he was just kind of on his own, just chilling. And then he met his wife. So, I mean, watching him go through these things, watching him make choices, I realized very quickly, well, which experiences would be good for me, which experiences would be bad for me, what I would and wouldn't do. Watching him make mistakes, I was able to kind of learn from him. And thus, I integrated that into what I knew. And... I'd like to think I avoided some bad experiences by watching. Another interesting thing, and why observation has become a more effective teacher, this is the silver lining in the internet. In the internet now, just go on Reddit and read stories. Listen to what your fellow men are saying, what they've been through, what their experience has been like, right? Um, Obviously, these stories are not representative of the whole, Right. But clearly it's it's enough of a problem that we have reddits on it and they will tell you what they went through, what the signs were. And then through observation, we start seeing patterns in the behavior. We start seeing trends and things like this. 
And instead of having to go out and feel that pain ourselves and learn from that, now we can help each other become more intelligent and become wiser uh, in ways that previously we could not do without the internet. So there are positives to it, right? Now, some things, as I said before, such as loss, they cannot fully be understood through this practice. You can be at a wake. Yeah, you're chilling out awake. You see a bunch of people crying and shit, looking at an open casket. It's not the same thing as seeing someone you deeply give a fuck about in that casket. It's not the same thing. It just isn't. So some things do not fully translate. But things like a guy telling you like, hey, man, you know, marriage isn't all it's cracked up to be. And here's the stats and things like this. So listen, pal, if after reading these stories and listening to what we have to say, your conclusion is, hey, listen, maybe I'll have a girlfriend, but I ain't signing the contract. Well, I just avoided a painful experience that I may have had to undergo had I not been given access to this information or been given the opportunity to observe what could happen. Having more information is usually better than having less, right? I do not really subscribe to the idea that ignorance is bliss in most instances. So, yeah. Some things you can't really translate it over to learning through observation. The substitute teacher can't sit in on it, but other things they can, right? And in an ideal world, by employing this tactic, you avoid copying mistakes that others have made, repeating the mistakes that your peers have made, and you emulate the good choices instead. You watch the decisions that people make and you see what works and you follow that. However, this is not foolproof. What am I, what am I talking about? Well, let me give you an example, right? For the black pill section of my audience, you probably would all agree that if you watched your best Chad friend <laughs> go and employ some game and, uh, you know, get a phone number as a result of that, or even your normie friend who has pretty solid and tight game do the same exact thing, and let's say you're a sub five, you would agree with me that probably your odds are less than optimal compared to your normie and Chad peers right? So it's not a foolproof thing. But on the same token, because you have other sub fives who gave you something a little more grounded in reality, you're able to look at them and be like, wow, I just avoided a lot of pain. Right? I avoided a lot of pain and a lot of rejection. And then instead of just kind of going balls deep, thinking like, hey, you know, maybe it's 100% me, that, you know, like things I'm saying incorrectly and things like this, which may be part of it, yeah. But sometimes it's things that just are part of who you are, right? You know, a person who's 5'3", and he has a 5 out of 10 face, you know, he comes across as arrogant. But a guy who's 6'2", and has a 7 face, he comes across as confident. It's like, at, at what point... Do we draw the line and say like, hey, you know, perhaps variables we can't control are coming into play here. And now we have to kind of go back to the drawing board and ask the questions like, is surgery maxing worth it? Is geo maxing worth it? Or should I be finding better things to do with my time based on what I've observed from my peers? Avoiding months, maybe even years of pain pursuing something that has brought me nothing but pain why do that when I can go and pursue something that will give me something tangible? Like maybe pursuing, you know, uh, a career in something that I'm passionate about. These are the kind of things that you have to consider. So, no, the system is not foolproof, and I think the Black Pill uh, viewers would agree with that example. But generally speaking, right, um, it's good to at least examine the things that work as a starting point and discard the things that clearly don't work based on what you've observed between actions taken versus the results of the action. Were the results desirable given the action taken? And if they weren't, then you need to reflect on why that is. The point is, though, by observing and reflecting, you can avoid making these mistakes yourself, which will save you a lot of bullshit, which is good. 
Now, some people can watch someone else make a mistake and realize why it is one having never made it themselves. Right? So you see a, you see a guy um, approach a girl and, you know, he says some stupid things. He embarrasses himself and she rejects him outright and gets the fuck out of there. Right? Let's say, for example, some people would look at that and go, okay, I see why, like, that was not the correct thing to say, and that's why he got the result that he did, and they get it like that. Then there's other people where you can show them that a hundred times over, and they just will not get it until they themselves are in it, right? So others will deny your observations until it happens to them. No. No, I'm going to be different. I'm going to be different. My situation is going to be different. And then it happens to them. And then they're like, fuck. If I just listened to you, I could have avoided that. Right? So risk averse people, they prefer using their five senses to collect data, draw conclusions, and assess which experiences are safe. And for me, by and large, in the context of intersex relations, watching my brother take the risks taught me a lot. For sure. So I'm very grateful to have an older brother because I think um, I avoided some mistakes by watching my brother. Um, he kind of gave me some realistic feedback based on his experiences, and I was able to integrate that into what I know and be like, oh, okay, well, do this, don't do that, you know. And that's how you get um, fewer instances of shit blowing up in your face. But again, it's not foolproof. Remember that. So people who prefer observation tend to generalize and assume no exceptions because they never experience set exceptions. So this kind of mirrors the experienced people who say, hey, you never experienced this, so shut the fuck up. Stop giving your opinion on this. You never experienced it. Shut the fuck up. And uh, I, actually, I actually do have a... Um, a coworker. She knows who she is. She's watched my channel, so she knows I'm talking about her. Um, and she she always likes to say, you know, like whenever I, whenever because you know I talk about this stuff at work too. Because I said, you know, I don't fucking follow my own advice. I talk about Fight Club like an idiot. At least with the guys I talk about Fight Club. Um, and sometimes she'll overhear, but the, you know, she's pretty based. She's Eastern European, you know, so she's cool. Um, married and everything, has a kid, all that, and. She um she always like goes up to the person I'm talking to and she's like why are you listening to him for like uh you know ideas about relationships and stuff. And I think the reason why um you know she's like that is because she's the kind of person where she has to experience it. That's just who she is. She's experienced things, she has so many stories to tell, and that's just how she's lived life. She's the complete opposite of me. Right? She prefers experience. That's how she learns. She learns from her own mistakes, becomes stronger for it. Me, I'm the opposite. I'm risk averse. I can watch her make a mistake and learn from her mistake. And then I know, hey, based on what I've seen, I've seen people make this mistake and this is the outcome that they got. And don't do that, right? But some people will draw a line in the sand and say, no, even though you and her are saying the same exact thing, there's a difference between you and her saying it. While for me, there's no difference. If it's true, it's true. That's how I look at it. But I find that interesting dynamic that just as there are people who do this, right? On the other side, though, this is what I'm guilty of sometimes. There are people who generalize. I've gotten better. I've been a lot more open-minded to exceptions to the rule. Um, I think there are numerous exceptions and you can run into them, and I reserve the right to be proven wrong by an exception showing up, but I don't count on it. Um, that being said, though, generalizations do exist because they tend to be true, but whether or not you should live your life by generalizations with a closed mind, that's the question. That's the question. Are you going to have a closed mind and say, hey, 80% of the situation is this? So I'm not even going to entertain the fact that I can have any exposure to the 
Now, there are people that are like that. And, you know, that's fair. If you're a statistical kind of person, it's like, all right, here's the probability. Here's the math. I did the numbers. Okay. And then there's people that's like, eh, fuck the probability. Tends to be these people. <laughs> fuck the odds. And there are people who say that, and they defy the odds. Should you count on it? No. But the general gist here is that experience and observation, the way that these two types of people are wired, it's fundamentally different. So there's a, there's a gap in communication when trying to convey to one another how they understand the world. When ideally, these two people should be sharing their, um, their thoughts and filling in the gaps for one another. But I think that would require those in the experience camp and those in the observation camp to have more open minds to the idea that there's more than one way to learn life lessons. Some things, like I said, like my dad dying, that's unavoidable. I can't vicariously watch someone else go through that. Sure, I can watch my brother go through it while simultaneously going through it myself, for example. Sure. But those types of situations, life doesn't give you a choice. You have to experience it. But then there's some things that, are, that you, do, you do have a choice. You don't have to. You don't have to get married. You don't have to sign a contract. You don't have to have kids. There's certain experiences in life that are optional. You don't have to do them. But you can talk to other people who have done them. You could watch other people do them and see how they handle it and see what works and what doesn't. And you can kind of absorb all that information. And then put two and two together. Yes. Absolutely. But which method works better for you? I think whether or not you're a risk taker or a risk averse, that plays a role in it. Yeah. Um, and I also think just kind of how you're wired in the brain. That, that affects what works better for you, I would say. Okay? But here's the thing. Despite that, despite the fact that people who are observationists, uh, they tend to be very, um, again, they tend to generalize a lot and base a lot of their life decisions and draw conclusions based on said generalizations. Despite that, it is still wise to avoid the avoidable right? If it's bad for you, there is value in listening to people who pay attention to their surroundings and they learn best from the mistakes of others. Yes, absolutely. You know, I'm not saying it's foolproof though. There are people where they could grow up in a broken home, learn absolutely nothing from it, and then from them spawns another broken home. Of course, of course. And then there's people who can watch it, observe it, and still spawn a broken home despite what they saw. Nobody's perfect. Right? But at the end of the day, what we're trying to hone in, in on, like at the core, at least in the mainstream, a lot of people say this. And this is why I call it the main teacher. This is how you learn. This is how you grow. This, that, and the third. But what you have to understand is that there's also this substitute teacher over here right? And you could avoid a lot of this pain bullshit by paying attention. Now, neurotypical people, they tend to just kind of go through the motions of life and things just sort of happen to them. And then they react to it. While observation people, they tend to be more proactive, preventative. I look at something, how can I stop it from happening? You can't stop anything from happening. Like, let's say, for example, I want to get a girlfriend, right? There's always risks, there's always risks. And it's like, okay, well, if I want to get a girlfriend, I have to understand that there's one, I'm not going to get 100% of what I want. That's the first thing. And two, shit can go wrong. And when shit goes wrong, I have to decide, well, how am I going to handle that? But if you're the kind of person who's like, no, I can't tolerate any shit going wrong. Again, your conclusion is going to be different. Perhaps MGTOW is going to be your conclusion. The point is that everybody has a different way of learning. They have a different way of processing information. And um, despite the mainstream saying, hey, this is how you have to do it, it's not the only way to do it. It's not the only way to do it. Life is a fork in the road. It's filled with forks in the road, it's branching paths. It's like playing an RPG where your decisions affect the story, like Mass Effect. That's exactly what it's like. And maybe you can't foresee all the consequences of your actions, um, at all times. But what I can tell you is in the age of the internet, 
where you have people experiencing things and then coming online and sharing the experiences, this teacher has never been better at teaching for sure. Um, and I think that's pretty much everything I have to say. So I guess just to recap everything at the core, um, we can continue this discussion in the comments, I guess, if you know you think I, I missed anything, but that's okay. Usually the video combined with the comments, that kind of encapsulates and covers the topic so that if a new viewer comes in, they can kind of get the full story and the full spectrum of perspectives, ideally, between the video and the comments. But recapping, experience is the main teacher, right? Living through it, going through shit. And as a result, you're processing all the emotions of going through shit. You're becoming stronger because you're becoming more effective at processing the emotions of going through said shit, right? But again, as I just said, you have to go through the pros and cons. You have to go through those emotions. And ideally, you want to go through good ones, not bad ones. But as I said, some experiences are unavoidable. Nothing you can do about it. You're going to go through it. It is what it is. But some are avoidable. And if they're bad experiences and you can avoid them, that'd be good. Sure. And if you could identify what the good experiences are with the good outcomes and embrace those, that'd be good too. Now, some people, they learn differently. You put an experience in front of them. Let's say it's an experience of a couple of months. They get a lot out of it. Another person, you give them that same two-month experience, they learn nothing. Some people, um, you give them a whole lifetime of experience. Still in the same exact spot. It just depends on the person, right? So others get it. Some don't. Risk takers, in my opinion, tend to be the ones that dive in feet first and just want to experience it for themselves. These are the people who get on the rocket ship and go to Mars. They don't want to read on a Wikipedia article what the explorers discovered and just take the information at face value and integrate that into what they know. They have to go and do it themselves. There's just people that are like that. But people who prefer experience, in my experience, <laughs> ironic, will often chastise the type of people who prefer to learn from other people's mistakes. And I think there's an envy there that this person can learn the same lesson as you without having to go through the pain that, they, that you had to go through. And that is, you know, problematic, but it is what it is. Sometimes you're going to have to accept the fact that another person knows the same life lessons you do and they did not have to experience as much pain to get to that lesson and arrive at that conclusion. So I would say that saying no experience, you can't have an opinion on this, is disingenuous and it's not conducive to a good discussion where people can learn from one another. But even though people with experience tend to do that to those who have less experience, right? Um, these people do tend to be emotionally stronger all right. And they tend to have a higher quality of life in the sense that they can appreciate good experiences more having lived them. They learn best from their own mistakes. Now, when you contrast that with the observation type person, this is what I call the substitute teacher. You listen to other people, you watch their experiences, you draw conclusions, collect data, and figure out, well, what's good and what's bad. And then you kind of move based on what you've observed. Okay. Now, some things, such as loss, you can't just observe it and get it, right? But other things, you can observe and be like, oh, I ain't going to do that. Watch a dude go through divorce court. Yeah, I ain't doing that, right? And, you know, some people, they can observe a great deal and get nothing out of it. They're like, nope, I don't fucking understand anything. Until I experience it myself, I ain't going to get it. And then there's people that can observe a very little bit of information and figure it out. Risk-averse people tend to embrace this type of approach, right? They want to collect the data, assess it, risk and all that, and then make a decision. But, you know, people on the downside here who prefer observation, they tend to generalize a lot. And then basically the generalities become law for them. And as a result, they're like, well, this is what the data says. Therefore, fuck your experience. A more open-minded approach is, look, it is an exception to what we've observed, but um, at the end of the day, it's just an exception. But the question, of course, at the core becomes, are you going to let a generalization prevent you from 
opening your mind to the possibility that maybe you could have a minority type experience. That would be good. You know, because again, a lot of the times we tend to look at like, oh, the, like especially in this space, the percentage of things that can go wrong is the majority of the time. We never really look too much at cases where majority of things can go right. You know, so it's a mixed bag. But despite all that, you know, there is merit in learning from other people's mistakes as well. Just as there are merits in learning from your own. Okay, and that was the recap. So feel free to leave a like. Uh-oh. Woo, woo, woo. Shit's burning. No idea where. Anyway, feel free to leave a like. <laughs> feel free to leave a dislike. Uh, call me an asshole. Whatever you do, don't report the video. It's good information. It helps somebody. Even if that somebody isn't necessarily you. But if you did find the information useful, you did like what you watched here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If not, unsub. It's all good. This isn't about money. Never was. This is about helping men realize that just because some girl rejected you, self-deletion shouldn't be the first thing that comes to your mind. Life doesn't end just because a girl doesn't want to kiss you or fuck you or whatever or be with you. Life keeps going. And we seek to continue to build, and that's why I've asked you guys for some input. Some ideas I like, other ones I, I don't deem relevant, you know, I have my opinions. Um... But you're, you are entitled to continue sharing ideas and so on. But we want to give you a comprehensive library. That's the core. We want to give you a lot of things to think about, a lot of things to reflect on, so that you can make informed decisions, basically, right? The whole observation side of things. Here's the data. Then you decide how you want to experience the world now that you have the data. That's up to you. I can't tell you how to do that. That's on you. But one of the goals of the channel is to give you the information so you can decide. And ladies, if you're watching, I hope you're learning something. I hope your perspective on men is improving. I hope. If it's not, okay, it is what it is. Can't change everyone's mind, right? But hopefully it inspires you to reflect on you know, how you interact with men. And how you treat men. Do you appreciate men? Do you take them for granted? Do you reciprocate? These types of things. The little stuff. And as always, I am that guy, Pete, that you refuse to invite to gatherings. I will definitely catch you for the next one, but for now, I'm going to head on out. Day is still young, so I'll see you all around. <laughs> take care.